Patrick Alvine, take a bow. Oh my gosh, what a masterclass of a performance this offseason from Vancouver Canucks GM Patrick Alvin. I get it, he didn't play in this game. He didn't do anything. The guys were already there, but he brought these players in and he put together this roster that allowed Vancouver to take a 4-3 comeback victory against the Calgary Flames in Abbotsford tonight. The Vancouver Canucks win this one, and look, this was a really exciting game, especially towards the end there. Vancouver was down 3-2 in the third period, and they score late, they score in overtime, they take the dub, and this was one of those preseason games that I think will ultimately inspire so much confidence and hype for the upcoming 24-25 season. But before we dive into the game, before we dive into the goals, I wanted to talk about the broadcast because I did see some people going out there and memeing about the broadcast. This one wasn't like some of the other broadcasts we had seen earlier today. We made a video talking about the Red Wings and how they use the Chicago Blackhawks Jumbotron footage as their video broadcast. The Canucks were in Abbotsford today, so of course it's not the same Rogers Arena crew, but they did have their own dedicated broadcast to this game. It's just unfortunate that the audio levels were very all over the place, and especially at the start of the third period, somebody accidentally cranked up the gain on the broadcaster's microphones. Yeah, Brendan Batchelor kind of sounded like somebody had a vacuum cleaner on behind him. During the start of the third period, the technical difficulties were definitely there, but, you know, at the end of the day, it was a fun game, nice experience for those in Abbotsford who watched everything go down, and the Vancouver Canucks won, which obviously makes it a lot more fun. Let's talk about the goals, then we'll talk about some players here. In the first period, you had a 1-0 goal scored by Max Sasson with 23 seconds left in the frame. Assisted by Kiefer Sherwood, it's Sasson on the right boards who throws the puck across into the crease. He's looking for a cross-crease one-time backdoor play for Jake DeBrusque. And initially, we actually thought that it was Jake DeBrusque who received the pass on the back door and used the heel of his stick to put it in. But upon further video inspection, it turns out that Sasson's throwing towards the goal actually went off of the goaltender Dustin Wolf and beat him for the one nothing decision. Pretty unlucky goal, I would say, for Wolf, but for Max Sasson, this was good to see him get something on the board. He didn't have the best game yesterday against the Seattle Kraken. However, in today's game, I did think that he actually did play pretty well. Alongside of DiGiuseppe and Kiefer Sherwood, Sasson was one of these guys on a pretty effective Vancouver Canucks, what was that, the third line? I'm gonna say third line just in terms of how it was being deployed. In the second period, we had ourselves two goals scored by Jake's. Yeah, kind of funny to see that connection here. The first goal in the second scored by Jake Bean of the Calgary Flames. It's a four-on-four -four moment in the game, so both teams got penalized. Bean had a chance on the left side, walked right in, and fired a shot far side down underneath the glove of Yuri Patera. That, I feel, was the only quote-unquote bad goal that Patera let in. He had a clear lane right to the net, clear vision. It's not like he was screened. He just got beat. Jake Bean, of course, has had a long tenure in the NHL in the Carolina and Columbus systems. Now he's in Calgary, and he scored a really nice goal here, assisted by Kirkland and Tyson Berry, who did make himself known in this game, too. But then... As with the first period goal Vancouver scored, there's another goal scored at the end of the period. It's Jake DeBrusque with, what is that, 34 seconds to go in the second period, who ends up tipping a Vinny DeHarnay shot down and by the Flames goaltender. DeBrusque had a really great game, and we'll get into that more as the video goes on, but this play, it's Quinn Hughes over to DeHarnay. DeHarnay the shot, DeBrusque the tip down. Pretty nice tip, too, straight out of midair, using that hand-eye coordination to make contact with the biscuit. And the Vancouver Canucks have a 2-1 to -one lead at the end of the second period because of it. Now, in the third, this is where things started to get a little bit dicey for Vancouver. At the halfway mark of the third period, you had yourself Samuel Hanzik tying things up. This was a pretty 
eh, kind of play. One of these where Yuri Patera, I don't really think it's his fault, but the Flames get in on the rush, and Samuel Hanzik makes a beeline for the net right after the puck crosses the blue line. Pospisil is there on the far left point, really, and then he sauces one right through the crease to Hanzik, who's on the back door. He ends up putting it right by Yuri Patera. I do feel like watching it live, I don't know, it kind of felt like it was offside, but that's just kind of my spidey sense tingling. I didn't really have a good look at it. It just felt offside, in my opinion. And they did say that they don't do coaches challenge or goal reviews in the preseason games. There's not really any point to doing that. But the Flames did get themselves a tying goal at the halfway mark of the third. And five minutes later, there was another near offside, potentially was offside, but they're not going to call it offside because it's the preseason kind of goal. Dryden Hunt gets the puck off of a pass from Basha. He looks like he fully crossed the blue line before receiving the puck, but hey, it doesn't matter. He gets in on a breakaway, deeks it onto the backhand, and shoves it five-hole on Yuri Patera. So not a great showcase for Patera in the third period, but I do think that both of these goals weren't really his fault. You can't blame him on a backdoor cross-crease one-timer tap-in, and you also can't blame him on a breakaway. Like, of course, you want to see your goalie stop those, but... Come on, it's a breakaway. 50-50 shot. It's not really the goalie's fault. The Canucks defenders were kind of handing the Calgary Flames these on-the-rush opportunities because even with the Dryden Hunt goal, both of the D-men were kind of falling down at the Canucks blue line, which opened up that lane to the net. However, at this point, it's a 3-2 Calgary lead, and the Vancouver Canucks are pressing. They're trying to come back. They're trying to get themselves into a tie. Elias Pettersson had a really nice shot that rung off the bar. He had Kiefer Sherwood with multiple grade A chances in this one in the second and third periods, but he wasn't able to bury it. And you had Daniel Sprong taking some shots too. He loaded up quite a lot in this game, especially towards the latter half of that third period. He was just kind of tossing pucks on goal from everywhere. Now, that's a pretty decent strategy, I would say, but he did just throw pucks on goal, long distance, short distance, whatever. He was trying to get it on net, but ultimately his effort pays off with 15 seconds to go in the third period. The Canucks had the power play because one of the Calgary guys threw it over the glass, Martin Pospisil, and Sprong ends up picking the puck up at his own blue line. And he just decides, hey, I'm going to do this myself. I don't need my teammates. I'm just going to walk right in, go against four Calgary Flames, get through each of them, come in on goal, deep backhand, forehand, and then bury the biscuit in the basket, stretching out Devin Cooley's legs in the process and hurting his muscles. Daniel Sprong scores the most beautiful goal we may have seen all preseason, and it's the 3-3 tying goal with 15 seconds left. What an acquisition made by Patrick Alvin as Sprong just decided to score himself. We said in multiple videos heading into the season that Daniel Sprong doesn't really play the best defense, he doesn't have the best back checking, he doesn't have the best off puck play, but when you give this guy space and when you give this guy a chance to score, yeah, he scores. He'll do this maybe once every few games and you'll be like, yes, that's the best player on the team. Look at his skill. And then he'll completely disappear for shifts on end after that. So the inconsistency is pretty noteworthy with Sprong in his game, but it gives Vancouver a beautiful goal here and a tie game heading into overtime where Martin Pospisil tries to come in on goal. He ends up dangling the pants off of himself and he falls down behind the Canucks goal, leading to Quinn Hughes picking up the puck. Eventually, the Canucks race into the Calgary zone. They're taking their time with it. Pedersen drops it back over to Hughes. Hughes up to Petey, who one time touches it across to Jake DeBrusque, and he scores his second of the game and the ultimate game winner in OT against Calgary. What a showcase of talent here from the new Vancouver Canucks. Kiefer Sherwood, I thought he had a great game. He was buzzing. He was going in there. He was getting shots on. He was getting rushes. You had Vinny Deharnay with the primary assist on the first DeBrusque goal. You had DeBrusque himself, and you had Daniel Sprong. Patrick Alvin absolutely cooked in the offseason. And I think we're starting to see just what exactly the fruits of that tree bear. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Canucks beating the Calgary Flames 4-3 in overtime in Abbotsford. I hope you enjoyed this British Ash Rolls 99. And, bye.